How do I know if I am really saved? This is what we're going to be talking about today. I'm going to go over some scriptures, some points. Um, leave a like, please share the video. Share with your grandma, your grandpa, your grandfather, um, whoever. Please share the video. Um, we're going to be talking about how to know if you are really saved. It's going to be a good one today. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. Hey, what's up? How do you know if you are really saved? So we're going to be talking about today. And I don't have too many scriptures. I'm not going to go over to that um, that much, but um, it feels really good to be back. I've been pretty busy, so I've um, been out of town doing work. So I have not been able to preach and I've been feeling so dry, dude. So dry. Okay, so we're going to get started. So in Romans 10, 9 through 10, it says that if you confess with your mouth that Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes until righteousness. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture says, whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. And so... It says, if you say it, if you say it with your mouth and you believe it with your heart, you will be saved. So it's one thing to say that Jesus Christ is Lord, but to say it in your heart is a whole different thing. And so when I meet a Christian, I know if they're saved. I know when they have the Spirit of God. I I know it. And it's a different thing, but it's this is difficult to talk about because the Jewish people, what they would, would believe is that the more times that you would confess it with your mouth, the more like, then it would go into your heart. So it's, it's different. So the thing is, is that you know you're saved if you have been called by God. So I had a vision. I knew God was calling me. So there, has, there first must be a calling to God. See, the thing that, and I made a video about this, but a lot of people believe that we actually choose God. We don't choose God. God chooses us. And so you just have to respond to the calling. And so this is what happens. If you believe that God is calling you tonight, all you have to do is confess that the Lord Jesus Christ, he is Lord. And that's all you have to do. And you just have to believe. And your faith will carry you until, you, until the day you die. And so moving on, this is what Luke 9.23 says. So that's like the first step. That's the first step. Like, um, I, I believe that the majority of the church believes that we just confess Jesus Christ is Lord one time and then we're done. That's not how Christianity works. That's not how following God works. So look, turning to Luke 9.23, this is what it says. It says, Then he said to them all, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. So what is denying yourself? Denying what you want. Denying what your flesh wants. Because my carnal flesh wants to sin. It wants to watch pornography. It wants to do all these things. But what my spirit wants to do is it wants to pray. It wants to worship. It wants to make live streams. Trust me, my body does not want to live stream. It doesn't want, it doesn't want to preach. It doesn't want to do the things of God. Trust me, it doesn't. But when I deny myself, I say, Lord, I'm putting you in the driver's seat. And I'm letting you drive. You decide. You. That's what... <laughs> giving control that's what giving your life up to jesus christ is saying god you choose now so you can tell if someone is saved if they're actually not in control anymore if they actually resemble christ in their life if the holy spirit actually looks like it's moving in their life if they're abounding from faith to faith if they're living by faith it says let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and so it says it says in Philippians 3 or 2, actually, it says he was obedient unto death and even to death of the cross. And so Jesus was obedient to death. And that, that's what following Jesus means. That's what being saved means. You're obedient unto death. We're not saved. We're being saved. We are being sanctified. It's not just you're saved and you go to heaven. We're saved so we can glorify his name on earth and our reward is heaven. That's, it's not like, I, I walk by faith or I say that Jesus Christ is Lord and it's just a guarantee. That's not how it works. We walk from faith to faith. We walk by the Spirit and our reward is heaven. So in Corinthians 5.17, this is what it says. So, I'll talk about this later. 
Oh, it feels good to be back. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away, but old things will come new. Now, all things are of God. Is your entire life of God? Have you become a new creature since saying that Jesus Christ is Lord? Have you changed as a person? I know I have. And I don't say that proudly. People have seen me today and don't recognize me. They don't recognize me. I had someone tell me, um, direct message me, and they said, what happened to you, dude? You literally did a whole 180. I left all my friends. I left everything that I knew when I realized that God was calling me. And I became a new creature, a new creation. I was reborn. It says that you must be reborn to inherit the kingdom of God. And if you haven't been reborn, then you're not... You're not a Christian. You're not following Christ. See, we use the we, we use this word Christian as so broad. It's so broad. A Christian is someone who follows Christ. And if you don't follow Christ, then you're not a Christian. You can call yourself a Christian, but it doesn't actually mean that you're a Christian. So have you become a new creation? It says in Galatians 2.20, it says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. Does your life reflect Christ living on the inside of you? Are miracles happening? Are you changing? Are you resembling Christ to not only your people, your family, but everybody else? If you want to if you want to figure out if someone is really Christian, you go ask their family. You go ask their family, you go ask their husband, you go ask their wife. They'll tell you. You can really tell if someone is a Christian by the way that they treat other people. So if you treat other people harshly and rudely and you just <laughs> you just cuss at them and just lash out in anger at them, then you're not resembling Christ in your life. And that's the truth. Paul says in Colossians 3, 8, he says, put away these things. He mentions filthy mouth, or filthy language, wrath, envy, blasphemy, malice. He says, put away these things. And if you haven't, you might not be walking with Christ. That's not the fruit of the spirit. That's the fruit of the flesh. Not saying that it's not possible because I was walking in the spirit and I was still doing those things, but you can't consistently practice those things and be a Christ follower. It's not possible. And that's just the truth. So turning to Romans 6, Six through eight. This is what it says. Knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves of sin. For he who has died has been freed from sin. So if you if you have been crucified with Christ, you, you no longer live in sin. You no longer sin willfully. This this is how you know that you're a Christian. You no longer have the desire to sin. I have lost all desire to watch pornography. I have lost all desire to want to drink or smoke or curse or blaspheme or be prideful. I have lost all desire. Have your desires changed? Psalms 51 says, create in me a clean heart of God. It says in Ezekiel eleven nineteen through 20, it says, I will take their heart of stone and turn it to flesh. Has your heart, has your heart turned to flesh? And he says, I'll put a new spirit within them that they may walk in my judgments and keep my statutes. Do you keep God's commands? Knowing that Christ has been raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But life that he lives, he lives to God. Likewise, you also reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Are you dead to sin? Does sin still reign dominion over you? Genesis 4, 7 says, you should reign over sin. You should conquer it. Do you conquer over sin? Those who are Christ and those who are saved, truly saved, conquer sin. They conquer sin. This is what a reborn person looks like. You have a new nature. You are a new creature. I said, I tried to mix the word creature and creation. I apologize. They are a new creature. This is what uh same chapter but verses 22 through 23 said, but now having been set free from sin, having become slaves of God, you have the fruit, your fruit to holiness and the end everlasting life. Do you have 
fruit of holiness or do you have fruit of sin? Are you still eating from the apple, the other tree, just like in Genesis, every once in a while? Are you still feeding off that other side? Are you still eating off the tree of sin? Or do you, have you, do you only eat from the tree of holiness? Because if you do, trust me, you'd be growing fruit true. Or you'd be growing fruit also. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Are you, are you acting like Jesus really died for you? Do you live a life that reflects Christ's life in your life? John 14, 12 says, they will do greater things than I did. Are you doing greater things? Are you doing great things for the kingdom of God? Are you evangelizing? Are you doing the work of evangelist? You must ask these, yourself these questions. Are you reflecting Christ's life in your life? Are you, are you reflecting the truth of the gospel in your life? It says in 2 Corinthians 4, 2, it says that we renounce our old ways. Have you renounced your old ways? Have you turned from your old sin? Have you repented of your own sin? It says, but we have renounced the hidden things of shame, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but, but by manifestation of truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. <laughs> have you renounced your old ways? Have you turned from your old sin? It says in Ephesians 2, 8 through 10, this is what it says. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works lest anyone should boast. Are you doing works for God? It says that we were called through faith to do works. Are you working for God? For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works. So we, so we stop. We say we have been saved through grace. We have been saved through grace. By grace, through faith. But it says in verse 10 that we are saved to do good works. Have you been saved to do good works? Are you doing good works? Are you baptizing people? Are you preaching the gospel? Are you evangelizing? Are you praying, laying hands on the sick? Are you doing the things that God has asked us to do? This is how you know you're saved. It says in 2 Corinthians 5, I apologize. So in Galatians 4, Galatians 5, 14 through 26, this is what it says. It says, For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. So if you are saved and you follow the commands, Jesus says, if anyone loves me, follow my commandments. So if you love Jesus, you follow his commandments and all of the commandments are fulfilled in this. If you love your neighbor, love your neighbor as yourself. But if you bite and devour one another, beware lest one be consumed by another. I say then walk in the spirit. You shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh for the spirit flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh and these are contrary to one another so you do not do the things which that you wish but if you are led by the spirit you are not under the law now the works of the flesh are evident which are adultery so if you're not saved this is this this will describe your life fornication uncleanness lewdness idolatry sorcery hatred contentions jealousies outbursts of wrath selfish ambitions dissensions heresies envy murderers murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like of which I tell you beforehand, just as I told you in the past time, time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God, but the fruit of the spirit is love. So if you have these things, you're abiding in the vine. Just like Jesus says in John 15, he says, apart from me, you can do nothing. He says, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. 
And against such there is no law. And those who are of Christ, are Christ, have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. I want to read that again. Those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. So if you are Christ, you have crucified, you have crucified these things. And you now live in these things. If we live in the if we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking, provoking one another, envying one another. So how do you know if I, if you are saved? If you believe and you follow God with all your heart, your mind, and your soul, and you consistently walk in obedience with Christ. Not only saying it with your mouth, but actually showing that you believe it. See, if I tell you something and I don't actually show you the scripture to back it up, then it means nothing. See, Jesus, if he, if he didn't rise from the dead, everything that he said would be a lie. But he actually showed it through his works. That's why James says, faith without works is dead. So if you actually have faith, show it. Preach it. Show it. Show it. You can't have works without faith. So how do you know if you're saved? You believe in Jesus Christ and you show it. And you do what he says. If anyone loves me, keep my command commandments. If you are saved, you keep his commandments and you crucify your flesh and you give up your life to him. That's how you know you're saved. Praise the Lord.